Corrosion of steel, which consists mainly of iron, is a major problem in our society, but steps can be taken to prevent it. The causes of corrosion of iron and the factors that increase it were outlined in the previous video, Corrosion, Its Causes. Knowing these will help us find ways to prevent corrosion. Corrosion of iron, or rusting, is primarily caused by exposure of an iron surface to oxygen and water. We can deal with this by painting the surface or coating it with an anti-rust coating and keeping it dry. Painted steel objects like bridges and vehicles must be repainted periodically to maintain a continuous coating. When cracks in paint occur, moisture can collect and rusting can take place quite rapidly. Another cause of corrosion of iron or steel is exposure to any stronger oxidizing agent than Fe2+. This includes all the species above Fe2+, on the left side of the reduction table. So we must do what we can to eliminate exposure of iron or steel objects to these oxidizing agents. Another potential problem is galvanic corrosion. This is where iron or steel is attached to a metal higher than iron on the reduction table, or a less active metal, in the presence of an electrolyte. So we must be careful not to attach iron or steel to a less active metal, such as an alloy containing copper, when an electrolyte is present. For example, we must pay attention to what type of bolts or fasteners we use when building steel structures. Corrosion of iron or rusting is enhanced by the presence of acids. So we can limit rusting by keeping acids away from iron or steel objects. This would include protection of the objects from acid rain. When the surface of an iron or steel object is exposed to an electrolyte like salt water, rusting will be enhanced. It can be slowed down or prevented by avoiding exposure to salt water and other electrolytes. Road salt should be washed off of vehicles when possible. Also, protective coatings can be used on vehicles. Finally, when some factors are causing rusting to occur, having higher temperatures can make it happen faster. So when it is possible to do so, we try to keep exposed iron and steel objects relatively cool. Another method that is widely used to prevent corrosion of iron is called cathodic protection. This first type of cathodic protection we'll look at uses what is called a sacrificial anode. This type of cathodic protection is achieved by attaching a metal that is below iron in the reduction table to the iron or steel we're trying to protect. Some metals we could use for this are chromium, zinc, manganese, aluminum, or magnesium. It would not be practical to use these metals below magnesium on the table. They react rapidly with water to form hydrogen gas. Metals below iron on the right side of the table are stronger reducing agents than iron, which means they're more easily oxidized than iron. Remember oxidation potentials of these are just these values with their sign switched. So the oxidation potentials of these metals are all positive. Notice that as we move down, their oxidation potentials increase from positive 0.45 volts for iron to positive 2.37 volts for magnesium. Notice that these metals below iron all have higher oxidation potentials than iron, which means they all oxidize more readily than iron. So if any of these are present with iron and an oxidizing agent like oxygen appears, these will oxidize instead of the iron, thus saving the iron from oxidation. Let's look at an example. Recall from the video on the causes of corrosion that when an iron surface is exposed to water and oxygen, an iron atom oxidizes to form an iron 2 plus cation, which dissolves in the water, and the electrons produced travel through the metal. The equation for this oxidation is Fe solid gives Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons. This is the anode region. Oxygen from the air then comes in contact with the edge of the water droplet on the iron metal surface. And it combines with water and the electrons formed by the oxidizing iron to produce hydroxide ions. Because reduction of oxygen takes place here, this is called the cathode region. So the anode region and the cathode region are both on the iron. The anode is the place where iron is being oxidized to Fe2+, and giving off electrons, 
and the cathode is the area where oxygen is reduced, using up those electrons. We see that rust is formed at the cathode region and the iron is eaten up at the anode region. The anode and the cathode are in different places, but they're both on the iron. Remember, we had shown that metals below iron on the right side of the reduction table will oxidize more readily than iron does. We'll choose magnesium with an oxidation potential of positive 2.37 volts. We'll attach a piece of magnesium to the iron metal. Because it's lower on the right side of the table and therefore has a higher oxidation potential, magnesium will oxidize more readily than iron. A magnesium atom will lose two electrons as it oxidizes to an Mg2 plus ion. These electrons flow onto the iron. The magnesium ion will leave the metal and dissolve in the water. This oxidation half reaction taking place on the magnesium is Mg solid gives Mg2 plus plus two electrons. Because oxidation of magnesium occurs instead of iron, magnesium is now the anode instead of the iron. Oxygen from the air will move to the spot where the iron metal, the water, and air are all meet. Oxygen in the presence of water will gain the electrons lost by the magnesium and undergo reduction to form hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions formed will dissolve in the water. Because reduction occurs here on the iron, this is the location of the cathode. Because iron did not oxidize, there are no Fe2 plus ions in solution, so no rust can form. As magnesium is oxidized, the electrons it loses travel through the iron toward the cathode, where they are used up as oxygen is reduced. Looking at the magnesium block, we see that as it is oxidized, it is gradually eaten up. When the magnesium block has been consumed, it is simply replaced by a new one. Because magnesium is consumed in order to save the iron from rusting, it is sometimes called a sacrificial anode. When magnesium is present, it is the anode, so the iron is not the anode. Instead, the surface of the iron acts as the cathode, where oxygen is reduced. That's why the process is called cathodic protection. Here is a photograph of the propeller of a large ship. The white blocks are zinc anodes attached to the ship. Their purpose is to cathodically protect the metal the propeller is made of. Here is a simplified diagram of an electric hot water tank. Inside most hot water tanks, we find a sacrificial anode rod. This can be made of either aluminum, magnesium, or zinc. The anode will corrode rather than the exposed steel inside the tank. It is recommended that these be replaced periodically. Galvanized steel is steel coated with zinc. It is made either by dipping steel in molten zinc or electroplating steel with a thin coating of zinc. The zinc protects the steel in two ways. First, it coats the steel to prevent oxygen and water from reaching the surface. Secondly, zinc is lower than iron on the reduction table, so it's a stronger reducing agent and thus is more easily oxidized than iron, so zinc cathodically protects iron in the steel. We see that chromium is below iron on the right side of the reduction table. Its oxidation potential is positive 0.74 volts, which is higher than that of iron at positive 0.45 volts. So chromium oxidizes more readily than iron. Stainless steel is an alloy containing iron, carbon, and other metals, including chromium. It is at least 11% chromium and can be anywhere up to 26% chromium. When chromium oxidizes, it forms a thin layer of chromium 3 oxide, which oxygen and water can't penetrate. In addition to using sacrificial anodes, another method of cathodic protection is the use of what is called an impressed current. Let's say we have an underground steel pipeline we want to cathodically protect. We bury an anode made of an inert metal near the pipe. Now we install a device called a rectifier. A rectifier is connected to an alternating current, or AC supply line. What it does is convert AC to direct current, DC, so it has a positive and negative terminal. 
The positive terminal is connected by a wire to the anode and the negative terminal is connected by a wire to the steel pipe. The rectifier pulls electrons from the anode and pushes them onto the pipe. Because the anode has lost electrons, it has acquired a positive charge. And because the pipe has gained electrons, it has acquired a negative charge. If oxygen makes its way through the ground, it will combine with water and excess electrons from the pipe to form hydroxide ions. As long as the pipe has extra electrons supplied by the rectifier, iron atoms in the steel pipe will not be oxidized. And in this way, the pipe is cathodically protected. The rectifier will keep supplying the pipe with electrons to replace the ones used for the reduction of oxygen. Because the pipe always has an excess of electrons, iron atoms will not need to lose any electrons and thus will be spared from oxidation. So the pipe is cathodically protected. So we can summarize by saying there are two main types of cathodic protection. The first method is accomplished using a sacrificial anode that is attaching a metal that is more easily oxidized than iron, or lower on the right side of the table. For example, if magnesium is attached to iron, the magnesium gets oxidized rather than the iron, thus protecting the iron from oxidation. The second method is accomplished using a rectifier or DC power supply to create an impressed current. Excess electrons pumped onto the object being protected will be used for the reduction of oxidizing agents and will eliminate the need for any iron atoms to be oxidized. For example, a rectifier takes electrons from an anode and pushes them onto the steel pipe, making it negative. So when oxygen comes along to be reduced, it uses these excess electrons from the pipe, thus sparing iron atoms in the pipe from being oxidized and protecting it.